Balake. Where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is here. We are at war. Me and Miss <laughs> Brister are at war. Okay. So listen, uh, yeah, welcome to the big SmackDown. Uh, Sunday night SmackDown. Uh, so I just want to say right off the bat that uh, this stream is for entertainment purposes only. Oh, you're backing down already. I knew no, it. No. I okay. knew it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you know, I just don't want to give the appearance that there's a rift in the SBTV community. All right, that's all, all right, man. All I'm right. just because I'm I'm all about in inclusivity, even when people, right. even when people screw up and accidentally impugn one another's reputation, which okay, we're so here to I, sort out. I did an uh, interview with Rachel Hastings. Uh, I don't know, three, my four, dear five friend days ago. of over two decades. And Mitch took uh, umbrage. He said, "My pearls, my pearls, good sir, uh, you have." You no, have that's not what I said. Pewed my honor. And not, I am going to show you guys uh, the clip that Mitch said, Aaron, now you've gone done messed up and you've gone yep, too far. I you did. know it. You yeah. need to put your manners back in. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So uh, here's the first little part. It's true. But, but I just want to get this on the record, though. You and I agree, and every other Seerg member I've ever spoken with, um, Mitch doesn't agree, but he wasn't a Seerg member. Having a physical <gasps> relationship with someone you're not married to is the biggest <laughs> sin a Sea Org member can commit for some reason. I, I mean, I don't know why the Sea Org became so puritanical. I mean, oh, we sort of yeah. do know why. Okay, good. And then I'm going to jump forward to 2050. And here we go. I don't know, but Mitch, you know, Mitch has a different perspective that by not being a Sea Org member and being someone who was more, uh, who, who David Miscavige would write him, him folks. as a, He's starting to squirm. Friend, He's like winding up. He's winding up. So he may it, have it doesn't seen make it does not it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't make it a more qualified perspective. It actually makes it a, a completely on it actually makes it an unqualified perspective. I know you're in the chat, Mitch, so it's not an insult. But Mitch is the first person <laughs> yeah, to admit well, Mitch, Mitch is the first person you say it. Mitch is the first person to admit that he got special treatment and he was sort of yeah. and it's like, well, okay, but if all that thing is true, then you don't actually um, it's fine. It, it, it's it's not really an argument. I just wanted to. Pick <laughs> okay, good. So I'm gonna unshare that screen, and here's the YouTube short that Mitch edited my reaction video. and posted to his channel. Wait. You know, Mitch has a different perspective that by not being a Seerg member and by being someone who was more. Uh, who who David Miscavige would write to him as a you're my friend like that type of connection. It's, so he may it, have it seen doesn't make a it does not it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make it a more qualified perspective. It actually makes it a, a completely un, it actually makes it an unqualified perspective. I know you're in the chat, Mitch, so it's not an insult. Well, that's the story of my life. No respect. Other than no respect. Okay, well, okay, we kinda, okay. We kinda, you kind of cut the first frame off, which is kind of really super important, the first text. But I didn't cut I didn't cut it off, though. That's just how StreamYard did it. Yeah, 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 I know. Uh, so, yeah, but it basically it says 30 years as the chief architect of Scientology's propaganda machine, and I can't get no respect because I know a lot of your viewers don't know who I am. So there you go. So well, here's my big well, question for you. Who are you? You were the film director for, for 28 years. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but my big question for you is how is my not having been in the Sea Org make my viewpoint on what we were talking about unqualified? How, what, how, were, what were we talking about? We were talking about um, Lou and Dave and whether or not they're having a sexual experience or not. So a, first a relationship. of all, we were specifically talking about Sea Org business and you thought I had no, no right to weigh in on that, no, no valid perspective because I wasn't on the Sea Org. That's not what I said. Okay. Yeah. First of all, I'll tell the audience what I've already told you. Saying unqualified was a misspeak. What I uh, what I meant to I was trying to contrast the idea of it making you more qualified. I sh what I should have said, if I would have said, was less qualified, not unqualified. Well, nobody was trying to say that I was more qualified. Rachel was trying to say that I have a different perspective. And actually, when you got, she said he may have a different perspective. Nobody said I was more qualified. And I can tell you, Aaron, she didn't say you I had can a different hear, perspective. you know, you need to you, you, you need to oil the, the chain on your bicycle, because when you backpedal, it's really squeaky. OK, and we can all hear it. 
Oh, no, I'm going to hold my ground on this firmly. Okay, good. good, good. What I said was I didn't mean to say unqualified or disqualified. I meant to say less qualified. Yeah, but you said that to me in a text afterwards. I'm talking about what, what you said live on youtube you said that it was a qualified but so but but still let's let's just go with however let's go with however you want to say it let's just go with that which is doesn't make it because 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 you uh at least in our text messages which we won't read um unless you want to which i I doubt you do um you seem to think think that i was saying that you don't have uh, a right or a qualification to have an opinion, and that's completely the opposite of, of what I would say. No, my no, problem. I didn't is, say that, Aaron. I don't think we're going to be able to settle this if we keep. You, you look. What you said was because, and you said it a couple times because I wasn't in the Sea Org. Yes, I was therefore not qualified or disqualified or unqualified. Less qualified to comment less, on well, the. You meant to say less qualified, but you said. Well, unqualified. how many times do I have to tell you what I meant to say before we can run with what I meant to say? Okay, fine. Uh, I, I, no, I'm saying let's run with what you meant to say. Okay, so let's do it. On the culture, if you weren't a Sea Org member, you, you and you said I had more Sea Org members calling me sir than most Sea Org members ever had in their right, life. Right, right. If you weren't truly a member and you've admitted a, a million times in your videos that you got special treatment this way, special treatment that way, you had your own special dining area, you had your own special schedule, you had your own special pay, you had your own special everything, you've admit you've said that. So that's right. not right. So all I'm saying is that if you weren't one of them, you have a unique perspective, you have a different perspective, you have a perspective, you do not have a more qualified perspective on the culture of the Sea Org than one of the Sea Org members themselves. It doesn't mean it's not a valid perspective, but it's not more qualified, and I want to give you an example that applies to myself. Okay. Okay. For three years, from 1993 to 1996, Mm I was a class five staff member from Philadelphia training at flag as an outdoor trainer. Right. I lived at the Hacienda with the Sea Org members. Right. I ate in the Elks building with the Sea Org members. Right. I did work study with the Sea Org members. I studied in the course room with the Sea Org members. I was on the same right. schedule as the Sea Org members. Right. But I was not one of them. Right. I can have, I have my experience for that for, during right. that time. It's, an experience it's a real experience it's a valid experience it could even be a different experience than an honest to god flag sea org member because the truth is there's no difference between a full-time flag fsottc or and me at that time except for the uniforms the contract and whether we went to weekly staff meetings okay fair enough but my i could not ever say that i was more qualified to speak on the experience of a flag sea org member than a flag sea org member because i wasn't one even though in 99.5% of the aspects i was okay. one i couldn't mathematically be more qualified than one of them to comment on the culture of what it meant or felt right. like to be a flag sea org right. member right and okay. so what i was pushing back i was probably pushing back on what i thought um Rachel was about to say, but she didn't actually say. I thought she was about to say that your close proximity to Dave and getting letters from Dave as a friend, I thought she was about to say it made you more qualified. And I pushed back. She never actually said that. No, she said different perspective. She didn't well, say Well, she said more. you probably saw a different level of narcissism. You could, you could have seen a different level of narcissism. Right. And, well, I, everybody and, sees the same level of narcissism. I just now, think that I have a very unique perspective on it because I was, yes, you did all those things, but I was also got to witness all those things. Like, I think what, I think what you're confused about is when, when you, when you, when I say special treatment, you think that means I had blinders on and boy, I did not have blinders on. I mean, I have, have, I feel like you have all but told me that you did. Oh no, 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 no. Did not have blinders on. There were some things that I was siloed from seeing, but they were very rare. Like the, like the whole, okay, I didn't know that it was happening until 2015. Just not so much that we were being kept from it, but the pros, we just worked on different lines. And so we but, weren't necessarily- But did you hear what you the words that you just said, though? You what? said the pros. Yeah, that, uh, which I was the number one pro up there. But the pros was a special group of people. Yeah, but okay- you differentiate you routinely this is not a criticism well, but, but you routinely okay, differentiate your experience up there i know but that doesn't mean but you, you keep trying to make it you're right and because of i was v- 
very different than the other pros. And every, everybody who knew me up there will tell you that. You keep trying to like, like, okay, you, I, I don't know how to say this. I, I want to be nice about this, but you, you're taking this kind of Sea Org viewpoint that a public person's view doesn't matter. It's like that, that, that elitist. You're, you're, you're projecting that onto me. I've no, never I'm said anything like that. I'm just like trying that. to understand what you're saying. I mean, my view is that, you know, you're like a guy who worked at the Apple store and I worked I've at never Cupertino, said and anything you're telling like me, that, I, but, but I've never said anything remotely like that. And you say you that's what I'm did. saying. You, you just I did. Would. You, would. you yourself differentiate your experience from the others there by even calling yourself something different. The pros. Okay, but I'm not criticizing you for that. I'm pointing no, out no, no. you yourself. You're just invalidating my viewpoint. It's Aaron, but it's, yeah, no, no, but Mitch, it's different. The Sea Org aren't the pros. You're calling yourself the pros. That's a dif you're differentiating yourself this was just from the Sea Org members. Like, oh, stop. This was just in respect to one thing where I was trying to explain to you that I didn't know about the, and if, I think if you let me finish the point, I didn't know about the hole until 2015 because nobody, everybody at Gold knew about it, but there was a group of us that didn't know, but I was handed a bootleg copy of Going Clear in 2015, okay, and asked to look at it so that I could help figure out what to do about it. I was the only pro in that position. When Anonymous happened, I was called into the war room with all of the lawyers and David Miscavige and, uh, and, and asked to, to help figure out how to push back on that. I witnessed stuff that no public person in the world saw and most Sea Org members never saw. And while I was doing that, I had special treatment, okay? But the special treatment was not some kind of blinders. I mean, literally everything you're saying to me, like you were working on the retail end of Scientology. I was working on the corporate end. Who is saying that to who? Are, are you saying I'm saying that or you're saying that? No, I'm saying that to you. I'm saying you're like working in the Apple store and I was working at Cupertino. And for some reason, because I've never sold an iPhone, I don't know. I can't speak about it. Like, I don't, I Except don't get I it. I never said that. I said I know. you, you cannot have, you be more qualified. You didn't say that. I'm trying to make an analogy about what you, you did You cannot say. be more qualified to speak on the culture I of never the Seorg than a Seorg member. I never said I was more qualified. I mean, okay, I, I feel listen. that you do. I feel that you do. Okay. There are because, some because, aspects because, of, there are some aspects of what was going on at the international base that I am hugely qualified to speak on. No one has ever questioned that. Okay, then let's go back. Let's go back to the subject that triggered this whole thing. And let's just focus on that. Let's just put the rest of it away. This whole thing came up because we were talking about uh, I was the one who brought up. Remember, okay, so first I brought up the fact that Shelly is never going to take over the Sea Org, and you re you rejected that, and then no, so, I don't, I never thought Shelly would take over the Sea Org. I did well, not reject that. You you okay, fine, but you 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 seem to not be in that camp. You seem to at least be questioning it, like because uh, what's his name, Russ Bellin, had corporate. Uh, he had corporate power, supposedly. Uh, I'm not the one who's ever said Shelley could have taken over. Okay, fine. Then we're going to move off of that. Then I was the one that, that said, even though other people like Mike and even oh, years ago, Marty Rathbun talked about Lou and Dave. And I was the one that said, you know, there's a, there's a few possibilities. And the one that I lean the strongest towards is that he's in a sexual relationship with her. And that's the thing that then you guys were talking about when you said, well, the fact that he was never in the Sea Org makes him, um, you meant to say less qualified. Does it, no, you meant to say it doesn't make him more qualified. Okay, but here's, here's where I want to correct you, and I want to put one thing on the table, is you, the entire premise that you were operating under was the worst thing you can do in the Sea Org is to have a out of, uh, out of wedlock you know, you were saying that is the worst thing, but the thing that you're missing, and I was in the chat trying to talk to you saying, Aaron, you're being too logical because David Miscavige does not see himself as a Sea Org member. You cannot, you cannot put him against that standard. So he that... doesn't see himself. He sees himself, and I know that because of the time that I spent with him, that no other Sea Org member and no other, very few Sea Org members and no public would have that experience. He does not think of himself as a Sea Org member. He that would not put a uniform on. Let me finish. I take issue with. What? That is an example of what I take issue with. What? That he's you not a Sea Org member? When you, no, no. You just said 
that your experience with Miscavige, right? Unless I'm misquoting you here, right? Gives you better, more insight. No, just in just in relation to what you said that you just compared him to a Sea Org member. Just, just, just in relation sentence. to that. Just let me finish the sentence. You do not have that right. Just you let me finish the sentence. wrong on that. He sees let himself me finish the sentence. as a super celebrity. He, let me finish he the sentence. He won't even put on a, a Sea Org uniform unless it's for an event. You're responding to something you thought I was going to say and I didn't say, so let me finish the sentence. Well, I'm responding to something you said, I heard you say the other day. 15 seconds ago, you said that your experience with David Miscavige makes you more qualified to know what's how he really thinks than the Sea Org members who worked with no, him. No, just with respect to this one issue because I I was in the room and I experienced them together so many times and you were relating to him as a Sea Org member. You were saying as a Sea Org member- I never member, fucking knew him. I'm not talking about me. Okay, but you made a value judgment about him based on him being a Sea Org member. You did do that. You said the worst thing a Sea Org member can do is have a relationship out of wedlock. And my head exploded because I'm like, Aaron Smith-Levin thinks David Miscavige is a Sea Org member. He's not. He, he runs the Sea Org, but he doesn't see himself as a Sea Org member. He sees himself as a super celebrity, Tom Cruise's best friend, who flies around in jets. He he doesn't like staff. He doesn't like the Sea Org. He thinks the whole thing's a, a joke. It's just a way for him to get power. And so this whole idea of like why, you know, that anyway, that's what I was responding to. It was just that one thing. I have no issue with you having an opinion that's different than anyone else's opinion. Okay, you, well then here's where the whole thing breaks down because what you said was, and what set me off was that you said that my uh, my my uh, perspective was unqualified, and then you said no 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 I didn't mean to say that I meant to say not more qualified. So let's have an argument about that, and I really can't argue with that because you're entitled to think that you're not entitled to to think that it's disqualified because that's just like it's less qualified. Than an yeah, actual okay. Sea Org member who spent 30 years working next to him. You are a pro. You were not a Sea Org member. You were hired professional worker. You got paid $7 million. Other people got paid $7,000. Uh, it was actually, they claim it was over $8 million in 30 years. I don't care. But my point is, but that, none your of that, experience that's just all, as you realize a pro, Aaron, that you're, but you don't know because you don't know what my experience your was like. Your experience as a pro. You don't know that. Not, you do not know that. You know what your experience was like. And you I have didn't an have assumption. an experience with David Miscavige. What's that? I didn't have an experience with I David know, Miscavige. I'm I didn't work you at the know. You know what your experience as a CERC member was like. And I know what your experience as a CERC member was like because I witnessed it for 30 years. But you don't know what my experience was like because you never saw one nanosecond of it. I don't so claim there's to a know little bit of a power differential here that you're assuming. I don't claim to know your experience. I claim to know the difference between someone who's actually a member of a group and someone who's hired to work in that group, but and is I'm not considered you a on member. That, and I'm challenging you on that point, which I actually hate to be doing because I have but so that's much. Why we're, that's why we're doing I it. I seem okay. a little triggered. It's because I have a lot of respect for you. You're one of the last people I want to be fighting with. But you don't understand. You seem to be mischaracterizing my position with respect to you. Well, do you want me to say it again? I am not saying that you are unqualified to say anything you want to say or people shouldn't respect and yeah, hang I on your every word. That. I understand that. I feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel that you have said that you have such a – that. That, that only you and not Mike Rinder, not Tom DeVock, not Marty Rathbun, not Jeff Hawkins, not Betty Miscavige, only you saw the real David Miscavige because he let his hair that, down man. around you. I never said that. Okay. There were absolutely things that he let his hair down around me, but I never said I'm the only person he did that to because all I know is he let his hair down around around Tom DeVock and, and Mike Rinder and those other guys. I don't know, but there were specific things he let his hair down around me. Um, I mean, I can give you examples. I can give you specific examples. We could go through a list. I could tell you, like, the night after the IRS win, I was in his office with him for hours going over stuff. Nobody else was there. We were just having a personal conversation. You know, none of the lawyers were there, none of the other execs. There were these things that I witnessed with him, and a lot of the things that he told me, like, for instance, I walked through in the late 90s before they built the, the new RTC offices, I was walking through his with him to his office to have a meeting, which was very rare that I ever went up to RTC offices. There were no reason to do that. Uh, and as we were walking through the, the the room where all the filing cabinets on, 
he he uh, threw a gesture at the at the filing cabinets and he said, you know, Mitch, there's more correspondence in those filing cabinets between you and me than between me and anybody else in the world. So when I say these things, they are a little bit qualified. But I, I will say at the same time, uh, I always saw him as such a pathological liar. I, I figured, yeah, that may be partially true, but he could just be saying that to make me feel good. Because I was always, always, even in the early days, I was always a little suspect of his personality. So, and, you know, and there was the time that I didn't tell you about, Aaron, when David Miscavige appointed me as a captain in the Sea Org. So I was, for a very brief period, I was actually a captain in the Sea Org. Did I ever tell you about that? I don't think so. So you, don't, you can't actually tell me that I wasn't in the Sea Org. I was a captain in the Sea Org. So, you know, F off. Can I tell you the story now? It's really funny. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So round about the uh, Lisa McPherson. Uh, uh, Ms. Kevich had been gone for months during that time. And it was probably the longest period of time I had no communication with him since I'd been up there. It was whenever that was in the late 90s. And I, if, I don't know if you, re, if you recall during the uh, wrongful death suit, they were trying to pin him as the captain of the Sea Org so they could blame him for everything. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I mean, um, you hear, you so. do hear this thing about he doesn't want to be blamed. He doesn't want to be identified as the captain of the Sea Org, right? I think this. There was a deposition where he objected to people referring to him as Captain Miscavige. Yeah, and the reason for that is because during the, the Lisa McPherson uh, wrongful death suit, they were trying to identify him as that so they could pin him directly to her death. So he, and he was furious as hell. He came back to gold. I ran into him one day. He walked up to me. We were just chatting, and then the, the conversation kind of slid into a very strange space. We're not because of anything I did, I was just watching him kind of come a bit unraveled. And, and he explained to me that they were trying to identify him as a captain of the Sea Org and blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know what? I know what I'm going to do about this. I'm going to make everybody on this goddamn base a captain. Literally, he said this. And then he started um, pointing at staff, like he was grabbing staff and saying, you're a captain, you're a captain, you're a captain. And then he pointed at me and he looked right at me and he said, you're a captain. So. Sorry, Aaron, you can't say I wasn't in the Sea Org. Okay. So anyway, anyway, obviously I'm joking, but that is a true story. Uh, and it was, you know, one of the many kind of things like he wouldn't have done that. He did that because it was me. He walked up. He wasn't going to walk up to anybody else to do that. I had a lot of shit like that. I mean, I witnessed so much stuff like that. And I'm not saying, oh, I'm the best qualified and I know better. Uh, I mean, I, I have spent more time working with Ms. Gavish because unfortunately, you know, Mike left in 2006, I think. I didn't leave till, well, the last time I was working with him was 2018. So I have a lot, you know, I got to see his full slide into the just complete, whatever, that's the, the, just, just the darkest place that he eventually ended up, which is where he is now, um, which he really started to become unraveled at Scientology and Media Production. But you can't put me in a box. Like if I say, yeah, don't me and the other. Don't put in a box. I don't well, even you, think. No, because I don't you minimize went, you. You made a big deal about when I said, well, me and the other pros. You were, oh, you differentiate. I wasn't even in a the box. I think other. that differentiation is important. No, it's it's actually. Yes, but but okay, fine. But there's another differentiation w w within that that is even more important because I was only making grouping myself in with the pros because at dinner time we would eat together in the dining room with all of the Sea Org members, not in some isolated place. Uh, we were all together. We just sat at our own table because, as you know, people who in the same division department or job grouping would eat together, right? That's just how it would work. And we would see as we left because we had a longer dinner, we'd see the guys from the hole being marched into the dining room once they were actually allowed to go back and eat there. So it was only for that, but there, every, I cannot tell you, Aaron, how many public Scientologists, my friends who knew me well, how many executives from Mike Rinder level people said, you're not staff and you're not public. And you, you live in this kind of twilight zone. I mean, I didn't want to come onto YouTube and, and start announcing this because it would sound like I was bragging or making myself special. I've tried to be sort of humble about all this. And towards the end of my career at Gold, 
I had like the the my quote unquote you know titular senior screaming at me because you know whatever you're a Sea Org member. I mean, I got some really nasty treatment, um, and so I I have this very high bred experience, and I kind of want other people to come on and talk about it when some have. Rachel did a little bit so that it's validated enough so. I can start to talk about it because it is so completely different and completely outrageous. Um, and then when you said that, I was a little bit like, oh my God, this is like, because, you know, I was a little bit triggered by it because I was so used to the, the Sea Org status of public being, you were, you know, it's not, you know, you hear that a lot Well, you were never in the Sea Org, so you don't really understand, you don't know, blah, blah, blah. I, I but, would. You know, never there is dismiss anyone's experience. Yeah, Being no, but a staff I don't, member, no, for it's example. not their experience. I don't mean experience. I mean the degree to which you would be able to listen to that person and accept their opinion. Because if, if someone who was never in the Sea Org expected a Sea Org member to not, it's one thing to listen to someone's experience about their own experience. Like right. I've got the staff experience and this and the Sea Org service org experience. And I've said openly, being a staff member in a class five org is harder than being a staff member at a Sea Org service org. That's an example. But, uh, but like if I was going to have I'm, a pub I'm confused, what's the difference between a class five org and a service org? Oh, you mean staff, not Sea Org? Being a, a non C or class oh, five get staff it. member get is it. actually more difficult, but I can yeah, only in some say ways that. because you have to handle all your own stuff. But yeah, I got it. But I can only say that because I was both. If a public, right. it was harder for to, you. If a public wanted to talk to me for twenty minutes about the difference between being a class five org staff member and a service org C org member, and I knew they had never been either, I probably wouldn't put much weight in that opinion just because they hadn't experienced it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but but do you do you realize that I was personally, viscerally in the room, seeing everything that you're talking about, working with Sea members, eating with Sea members, sleeping in much nicer quarters, but next to Sea members, yes, visiting their quarters, knowing like I witnessed all of this, right? I, I know that completely. Yeah, I and and there was very little that I was shielded from, and there was a lot that I was not shielded from. Like, you know, two weeks after Paul Haggis uh, made his 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 uh, resignation letter, I was like very strongly requested to go to his office in West LA and have a chat with him. But so this is why I said I feel like you're you're putting on to me things I've never said. I think that your story is as unique and important as anyone else's story and experience, and I've never said otherwise. Where I take a little bit of an issue is I feel, in things you've said to me, not just in our videos, but privately, that you believe you uniquely know the real David Miscavige. No. Dif Let me finish my goddamn yes. sentence. Yes, I just was going to say no, but... Okay, that you uniquely know David Miscavige because of your status as a non Sea Org pro, even more so than the Sea Org members who worked with him up there for 30 years. No, that, that's I, we have a misunderstanding of that. We should just clear that up right now. No, I never okay. said that, and nor do I feel that. I feel a couple of things. Here's what I feel. I think if you, I don't feel that I know the real David Miscavige because I don't think anybody does, the least of which is David Miscavige. I think if you really want to have it, a, a, a conversation about David Miscavige, you have to take everybody's viewpoint. Mine, Mike Rinders, uh, Tom DeVock, all these guys, you have to take all of them and put them together into a kind of a montage, kind of a, and because somewhere within all of our experiences, you could probably make the best, best deduction, but you kind of didn't, you wanted to excuse mine from that grouping because supposedly I was a pro. Here's the thing. Uh, hold on, stop, 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 stop. Okay. That's it's not that I want to exclude yours. It's that I feel you have, and, and uh, not in our videos, but right. offline. Right. I feel that you've expressed to me that because of your status as technically a non Org member, but gray area Org member, that that you were in a unique opportunity to know the real Miscavige right. that the real Org members didn't. When I go, mm -hmm. Mitch, why would you think Miscavige wouldn't be more likely to bullshit you 
than the people he grew up with since he was a teenager. Oh, I think I already said that earlier that all the while I was always suspicious when he said, you know, there's more stuff in there, you know, between you and I than anybody. In the back of my mind, I was always, that may not be true. That may just be somebody, you know, uh, trying to impress you. So uh, I don't, uh, I'm not very easily corruptible. So the answer is, he absolutely bullshitted me. I mean, the last letter I got from him when he referred to me as a friend, when I really read that that in 2018, when I really read that letter, even that manipulation, even his perception and, and extension of his friendship was complete manipulation. The, he does not do anything that's not manipulated. And so the times that he was gracious to me or generous to me or whatever, it was just so that he could receive some narcissistic flow to kind of help his shame-filled you know, broken personality. Like I know all this stuff, but the thing is, is my status, just to clarify something, you said my status as a, you know, see or grace or a public, whatever, it, that wasn't it. I my don't consider you a public. I know you were a pro. Yeah, no, no, no. But that wasn't what my status was from. My status wasn't from any of that. My status was because I had uh, fulfilled, because I'd finished the tech films and because the church was, uh, you know, Hubbard said the church wasn't going to survive. So it wasn't going to survive unless it was done. And they had a pretty much a three decade struggle to get anything done with that. And I came up there and I licked the problem. And so I forever, until I left, I forever was sort of in the pantheon of, you know, of, of, of important people in the history of Scientology. It wasn't because I was staff or not staff. It was because of what I've done. And, um, you know, I mean, eventually, as I've said, if you work for the church long enough, especially the Sea Org, eventually you'll be traumatized and humiliated. And whatever you did, somebody else will take credit for it, and 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 they'll they'll blame you for things you never did. And that's just the arc of everybody's story, including mine. But you know, anyway, that's the deal. Right. I guess it like genuinely upset me a little bit because I was like, I, I was like, man, I I went through a lot, and like I. I I, I experienced a lot and nobody else did in the whole world. And it's that, you and, a, and a, well, no other Scientologist public or Sea Org experienced the things that I went through. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm talking about the projects that I completed, the meetings that I was in, like how many of these meetings that I was in, there was no other public people in those meetings. It was only except attorneys and Sea Org members. But Mitch, you did just say what I feel wow. like I've been accusing you of saying. Which is that what? you and only you have been involved in uh, uh, enough of this and enough of that to know the true scope of everything wow. and the true David Miscavige. You said you just said no Sea Org member, even the people that have been at international yeah. management okay, for 40 okay. years, have been through what you've been okay. through. Highly likely, I do have, you know, I know you're gonna hit me on saying this, but there is always the chance and 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 that, that I may have the most unique perspective of anyone because of the stuff that I went through, because of what I witnessed and what I experienced and what I accomplished. And it's just, I hate saying that, but because it sounds like I'm tooting my own horn and I've really tried to avoid doing that. Um, so I'm sorry, Aaron, it may be true. I don't know. I haven't really figured it out, but I, uh, in terms of you know, I, I worked a lot. I, I think I worked closer with him than any of those guys and for a lot longer. You were me. Okay. So that brings us back to, that's what I, that's, that was my opinion of, of what, that's what I was saying you were saying in the first place. And you took issue with my characterization of that. Well, um, I, I took issue with it because you said that because I wasn't in the Sea Org, I, my, it didn't make me more qualified. Nobody said anything about more qualified. It actually made me unqualified. And then you change that later. Less so, uh, I, you know, I'm I, like, I, I don't have as big an, or, I, I wish I was just arguing about you saying it doesn't make it more qualified. It, it's not that I wasn't in the Sea Org makes it more qualified or that I had special treatment or whatever, but I had access that nobody else had. I had, um, kind of interactions that nobody else had. I had time spent with Miscavige that more than any of those guys had. So I was just kind of like, you know, I don't particularly 
need to be more respected for any of that. I just don't want to be disrespected because I wasn't in the Sea Org. Because I okay. think. You so the problem, uh, I, I, one, I think I 100% understand what you're saying. The problem is that um, there's, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, that might be too big of a number, people who have spoken out, are speaking out, who spent decades and decades working with L. Ron Hubbard and David Miscavige working uh -huh. in RTC and CMO Ints. Right. None of them claim or pretend to have better knowledge than anyone else they each just claim to have their own knowledge even janice well, will concede uh, that someone else might have some different knowledge but it's not hers and the problem mitch is you're saying you don't want to be disrespected but the problem is you're the only one that i'm aware of who actually seems to think that their particular unique experience might be the mostest truest experience no not at all and you keep mischaracterizing it that way but uh, all i'm saying is that my experience may be entirely unique and valid amongst all of the others, okay? Not because of, you know, who I am or what I did, but, you know, I did do some things that were, um, I got a tremendous amount of credit for, so. Okay. I guess, I mean, and, and look, I, look, fine. you said, I mean, play the thing again. Now that we've had this, maybe you should play it again. You Why? very specifically went, you went off on this thing of it doesn't make his opinion, uh, his uh, perspective more qualified. As a matter of fact, it makes it unqualified. That's I what I went off less. on. That's fine. But the, the fact that you were a hired pro who was being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to be there, who wasn't restricted to the base, who wasn't going to be RPF'd, who wasn't this, makes your opinion unique and different. And there's no public Scientologist or staff member in the world who has your experience or your level of access. Right. But it does. But I feel well, like in, I feel like you are smart enough that you should that you should be aware of your own story and go. Uh, my story's different. I can't claim to know David Miscavige better than Biddy Miscavige, better than Mike Rinder, better than Tom DeVocht, and that you would sound ridiculous if you made that claim. Oh, wow. Did you just did you just accuse me of being so stupid that I don't even understand my own messaging? You didn't just do that, did you? Well, I don't like how you're characterizing I, it. Well, I, that's what I heard. As a, I, non Risker, I member, so as a non Sea Org member, hired pro. As a non Sea Org member, hired pro. I think you would go. Oh, I am going to be getting a sanitized. If anyone's going to be getting a sanitized experience, versus a CMO Int exec well, or you, it's you. But I wasn't. It wasn't sanitized. Who said it was? You're the one saying it was sanitized. I said if anyone was getting a sanitized experience, it would be you. So well, you wouldn't know the one true David Miscavige. You would be the one least likely to know the one true David Miscavige because he would be putting on a show for the hired pro. He puts on a show for everybody, Aaron. He yeah, even, but more he so even, for, Hold on a second. He even convinced you that he's a Sea Orc member. And I got news for you. He's not. So the fact you, that you're calling you, David Miscavige, who's been a Sea Org member since he was 14 or 15, right. and you say he doesn't think of himself as a Sea Org member. He himself as a Sea Org member. Have you ever asked any of the former Int execs if they think that's true? Why would I need to have – I can have my own observation. I've seen him. Have you ever I've, asked any of the other former Int execs if they think that's true? Like who? Give me an example. Have I ever asked Mike Rinder? Or Claire Headley? Or Janice? No, no. And they may have their own perspective on that. But because you think your perspective is more correct. Say it again. That because you think your perspective is more correct than theirs. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. No. I absolutely don't. I, I don't at all. Okay. I, I don't think it's more correct. I, I think that what I observe from him is like, this guy doesn't think he's a Sea Org member. He's just, he doesn't, he's, he's completely above the law. He, he's, he's above Sea Org rules. He's like, Okay, so you said that the worst thing a Sea member can do is to have a, 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 a sexual relationship out of wedlock. I don't disagree with that. I witnessed that. I saw what happened to people when they did that. He doesn't care about that. So what to what degree does he have to act not like a Sea member before we make the conclusion, you know what, he doesn't think of himself as a Sea member. In That's order for him to be able to put in discipline on other people for certain actions, it cannot be broad public knowledge that he himself commits those same actions. It would be impossible for him to put in ethics and discipline on any of his subordinates if people thought he was fucking some woman that wasn't his wife. That's not true. 
because everybody true. knows he is and they don't give that's a not bother. true i've i've uh, that's not okay. true okay 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 well we're not going to agree on you're that the only one who's ever said that well uh okay Maybe you're the I'm... only one who has ever said that said what what you just said what repeat it what did i say Everyone at Int Management knows that he's fucking some woman who's not Shelly, and that he's and that he's still married to, and he's still married to Shelly, but he's fucking some well, other woman. That, that's a gross exaggeration. That's a generalization. No, it's not. That's what is exactly what you just said. I know, but I'm going to take it back. Okay, just I, that's not what I meant to say. Just like you didn't meant to say what you said, I didn't meant to say that. What I meant to say is, if you hang around with him enough, you fly on a plane to England with him, you'll start to believe that as one of the strongest possibilities when he disappears into the bedroom of a G5 for eight hours and he comes out the next morning and he and his sister, they're both freshly showered and at the same time, and they're both freshly looking something else. You start to think, Hmm, maybe that's a possibility. Based on your information. I think there's a very high likelihood he's sleeping with Lou, but when I just float out the idea, then why wouldn't he be divorced? You claim to have some special knowledge that you don't actually have based on some secret way that you know David Miscavige that nobody else knows. Instead, of just, going, you... instead of just going, maybe he is divorced. It, it, neither one of us know, but you claim to know. Well, it's just my perception. It's really difficult for me. Okay, so you do a really good job of characterizing as me saying I have some special knowledge. Okay, so who was on the jet? I, he happened to randomly, I was working there, and he said, hey, why don't you come to England with us? Uh, now, I, I would never say, well, that makes me special. But that really did happen. I was really there. I believe every word of that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not that I have some special knowledge. It's just that, have you ever, like, run into maybe a couple of your old friends and you did wondered if they were together? And you're thinking, yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's just little telltale signs. You know, there's the body language, the way what they're at meetings, the way she doesn't stand behind him, the way an assistant would, the way he sort of looks at her about they have this kind of telepathic communication. I they're, believe that he and Lou are having a relationship. So then you're then what's your objection to me? Because you keep accusing me of saying that I have some special knowledge. It's not true. I happen because to be there when I the happen question. to see this. People are wondering why we're doing this in public. It was my idea to do this in public. I said people like seeing real people hash out real issues. And this seems to be a core fundamental problem that it was clear to me behind the scenes that Mitch really has a problem with some of the stuff that I've said, except no, no, just I feel that like one I'm perfectly thing. except just I feel like I'm, thing. except I feel like I'm perfectly justified in what I said. And I thought no, we could you, we could I we didn't could, want if you to just stop interrupting you. me for a second. Yeah, I didn't want to so, fight with you about this. I wanted to just clear it up. Because, you know, I have a lot of respect for you and for what you've done. And I just, I really thought, I, I felt that I had, uh, I was within my rights to say, wait a minute, why would you well, of say course. that I'm unqualified? Well, of that course. But but also because I did say what I said in my video, I wanted the opportunity for you to come on and for my right. audience to see right. that I'm talking with you to your face about the same thing I've said right. to Rachel. And that it should be something we should be able to discuss. But let me, I think I have an answer to the last question that you asked me. Okay, good. Where I start to feel that you claim special knowledge is when you completely dismiss the possibility that Dave and Shelley could have possibly gotten a divorce and you go, no, he would never bother because X, Y, and Z. <laughs> right. And I go, okay, you don't, but you don't put it forward as an opinion. You put it forward as the truth. At least I, that's what yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, let me just amend that. Okay. okay. Maybe we can bring this to a controlled landing. Let me just, <laughs> let me just, because that's what I want to do. I have a bunch of stuff I want to talk to you about that is just great tonight, stuff though. that has nothing to do with you and I arguing. Okay. And, and I don't want this to be in any way become some kind of an impediment because it shouldn't. No, it's not at all. Because I seek you as the founding father of the SB Nation. You're our George Washington. Okay, so. No, don't say that. Why? Is that is that politically incorrect? He owns slaves. You can't say that. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fair no, enough. No. There's no would... reason. I don't want you to feel like you, you know. I don't want anyone to think you got. You have to come on here to kiss my butt. Like we, no, we're no, going to no, keep no. doing videos together no matter what. Okay, I, it was so my idea to have this conversation. Here's the like, deal. Let me amend this. Let me amend this. Okay. The fact that I was on that chat and that I spent. Well, let me see. Mike. Let's say Mike left in 2005. Claire left in. Uh, Claire and Mark left in 2005. Mark left in 2006. So, so 16. So I was there for another eight, 18 years. I accumulated like you know, over 15 years of more experience than those guys had. 
Um, but let me just amend this. Anything is possible, Aaron. He could be, they could be divorced. There, I said it. And I'm not just saying it to capitulate. I actually believe it. They could be divorced. I mean, obviously, he's, you know, he's got the legal power, I'm sure, between, you know, Monique Muffins and all the other attorneys he has. Somebody in there could figure out how they could get divorced. I just, I think that he lives in this other dimension, which is like, if he was get divorced, that's like wog law. Who gives a shit about that? He could just go on living, wearing his wedding ring and take it up with Lou. Okay, so. That's true. There's 10 million different ways. It yeah, but gone. see, I'm just telling you what I actually believe. And I right. and, and that's what I believe. And if you're asking me, is it possible there to be divorced? I would say, yeah, I don't believe that. But of course it's possible. You know, okay. I, I, and, and that, and that, that is you, you and I, uh, I would never have said one cross word about you to Rachel <laughs> behind your back while you were in the chat. If, if that's the basis upon <laughs> which we can have the discourse, because neither of us, know, neither of us know. And, and I freely admit that my opinion on their status is just my opinion, but it's based on my opinion regarding the Sea Org culture. And right. I guess, I guess I took it. Um, I was offended that you seemed to think that you were the expert on Miscavige and the seer culture, as opposed to just offering yet another opinion. No, but that, no, I don't, I don't, but I, I, you know, maybe I got ahead of myself, but you know, I did work with him for 18 years longer than any of the other people that you reference. And I was the only person that you personally know. But who, David, uh, David Miscavige grew up with Mike Rinder and worked with each other from the age yeah, of. Yeah, I don't invalidate that. I'm only saying include my opinion in the fucking mix. I thought you just said you worked with Miscavige for 18 years longer than Mike Rinder did. Oh, oh, I mean after. I meant after. I didn't mean longer. I'm sorry. Oh, I misspoke. No. I oh, meant 18 okay. years after. Okay. Right. And, and a lot of things changed at that point. Right. So, um, and all I'm saying is I, my opinion should be included and it should be considered with at least equal weight because of my I experience. totally agree. And the fact of my not being on the Sea Org or the fact of my being a pro paying lots of money has nothing to do with it because you know what? There's other pros who were paid lots of money and they don't know shit, Aaron. They didn't see crap. I mean, I, you know, if they weren't on the fucking planes and, and sort of like, being, you know, whatever. I don't want to even get into that, but um, there was, oh God, I forgot what was, there was, there was a, another reason. Every Everybody wondered, You, I, I just thought of this, but let me, just g g give me a moment. When we were having the discussion about Shelly and somebody said, well, sh she was sent to CST because they didn't want her in the hole because if she's in the hole, she could possibly ferment, ferment uh, an insurrection, right? That's not why. She was sent to CST because he never wanted to see her again. He wanted her done for good. The guys in the hole, they were just being temporarily punished. That was I just, totally agree with you. Yeah, okay, good. Good. Yeah. yeah. So that I mean, even Biddy Miscavige said nobody would ever have followed Shelly. Yeah, I mean uh, they I might mean, have followed, her, but that's and that's her opinion. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, and I and I knew Biddy a little. I didn't ever work with her. I knew her when she was married to Ronnie. And uh, um, I had a sense but, of her temperament. But Mitch, Mike Rinder has also said that he thought perhaps some people could have followed Shelly. So even the most expert of experts can have different opinions. Yeah. I don't, I'm not in, 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 under any illusions about uh, that. Yeah, I think more people would have followed Biddy personally from what I observed as her as a person. She right. was a very strong leader, um, right. which Shelly wasn't. I never, just so you know, I... I never saw Shelly's anything more than like a, a glorified, like like a social director and a person that ran around and did errands for Dave. I mean, she was, and I know a lot of people were arguing with me about that, but again, because I was kind of off to the side and I didn't have the pressure of CERC members and I had the uh, the liberty of observation that other people didn't have, I could kind of step back and really look. It's kind of part of my job, you know, when you direct films, you become this like hyper observer of life because you have to always interpret things in front of a camera and make them seem authentic. So I do think, and I'm, I'm not trying to be an elitist about it, but I do think I have pretty good powers of observation. And because I didn't have the pressure of a Sea Org member and because I was allowed this pretty much this, well, more access than most Sea Org members, I did get to exercise certain level of observation 
And like Shelly, I really liked her. She was nice. We we coordinated on Christmas presents, birthday presents. But I, I, she was not a strong person. She was a nice person. But anyway, I, I just I felt I had a little bit more to say on that, and I said it. Okay, uh, let's jump through some super chats. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. Barb says you wouldn't think it possible, but I just witnessed Aaron talk over himself when showing the clips. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Abigail S. Hey, Aaron, off topic, and you'll probably get to this after I left to go to Zach's stream, but when are you going to have him on? Are we talking about my lawyer friend, Zach? He still needs to reach 10,000 before doing... Oh, my God, I thought it was Tommy who told me he needed my help with that. I totally forgot it was Zach. Um, yeah, I'll have Zach on tomorrow. Um, okay, Gary Gunnels. I'm very confused. Why is this important? You know, the answer to this question is because it's not. Um, this is YouTube. Uh, people like watching long form content these days. Me and Mitch were having um, uh, a spirited disagreement about something. And I said, Mitch, this would be much better if we just discuss this in a video. And, you know, 1500 of you have been kind enough to watch. So I, I there's a lot of people in the <laughs> well, comments. Watch on asking, your channel. I don't well, know how many watched on my channel. But, well, yeah. there's a lot of people in the comments wondering why I keep doing this. I think they underestimate my capacity to maintain a, a, a spirited debate. Um, I don't feel like I'm wasting my time. I feel like this is a good use of time, to be perfectly honest. Um, now, I didn't see this earlier. Uh, Jackson says, hey, buddies, can I uh, join to share some more understanding to all of this? Jackson, I don't know if you're still there, but we're not looking for clarification on who's right or wrong. We're just looking to have each one of us understand where, where the other one was actually coming from. I recognize I could not even possibly be more right than Mitch um, because I was <laughs> never there. Um, but it's anyway, I think I don't want to re-say what we've I just said. didn't want to be less wrong because I wasn't in this viewer. I don't not understand that, Mitch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Pillow, yeah. is Lou Larice Stukenbrock the same person who married yeah. Uwe Stukenbrock? Yeah. And the yeah. answer was that when Lou cemented her quote unquote relationship with David Miscavige? I don't know. Uh yes, yes, yes. Okay. There you go. Yes to all of those. Okay. Redneck Virgin Mary, could you explain what tech you are using for us? Oh, I thought this was a Scientology joke. Could you explain what yeah, tech so you are I. using for us who want to create our own channel? Mitch probably has different tech than me. I'm using an iPhone as my camera, a MacBook Pro as my CPU, and a Shure MV7 microphone as my mic. Yeah, okay. What are you so, using? What am I using? Mm -hmm. um, what about your lights? What are you using for lights? $20 Amazon LED lights. Okay. Um, I'm using a Nikon DSLR that uh, streams directly uh, 1080p uh, out of HDMI, and I'm using an iMac, and uh, I have some LED panels that are with, I have an umbrella for soft lighting and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, basically, you don't need anything to do this. You need an iPhone and you need StreamYard. You need a way to mount your phone, and uh, you know, Aaron looks pretty good, and he's using $20 lights. So that's right. I mean, I got, I, I got one light here and I got one light here. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. That's the whole formula. Okay. So, Vicky Patoot or Patout. I don't know if Aaron misspoke in the Rachel video, he should have corrected it. He said it and he seemed angry to me. It gave me a bad, a bad vibe felt bad for Rachel. No comment. <laughs> I would never bother correcting anything because the uh, internet has no attention span nor any memory. It would be it would be pompous of me to apologize today for something I said in a video yesterday. It would imply that if you're watching my video today, you watched my video yesterday. Yeah, but which, at least you don't have to when you hold yourself accountable, you don't have to burn in hell. I mean, there is always that. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, that's why I wanted to do this. This this is me correcting it. Yeah, I'm um, glad you did. I'm glad you did because uh, I'll be uh, any any chance to go on with you, uh, spirit of debate or and isn't that what I said to you, Mitch? I said, Mitch, well, it sounds like you're upset. This is just an excuse for us to do a video together. What's your problem? <laughs> well, yeah, okay, that's what I said, isn't it? Yeah, you said it, but it was not like, yeah, yeah, you're right. But you th you thought I was kidding. You thought I was being a dick when I said that, but I was being totally serious. Absolutely, I did not. I did not. Oh, okay. think you were a dick. One hundred percent. I was like, oh, great, another. Uh, another opportunity to go on with Aaron. I mean, it's great. Okay, He's okay. right. I thought you were 100% right. right. I thought you were really like pulled up your big boy pants and were like, oh no, let's just do this like on, on YouTube. And I was like, whoa, yeah, let's do it. Like, this is like bungee jumping for me. So. All right. All right. 
Barb says, um, just watched your chat with Rachel, Aaron. It doesn't, quote, it doesn't make it a more qualified perspective. It actually makes it an unqualified perspective, unquote, war over. No, I, I agree. I misspoke. I, it was, I, I should, that's not what I meant to say. And I said it wrong. It was, it was wrong. But um, is, so you feel like you owe me an apology? It wouldn't uh, be the first time. No, I, I apologize for misspeaking, but it's not what I meant okay, to say. Good. We're done. It's, We're done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't need you to apo apologize for it. For, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oracle one, not about your experience. Uh, uh, it's about how a Sea Org member would view it or feel it. And David Miscavige's relationship with the org and how much he really shares. I'm not sure I understand the comment, but thank you. Um, Confusion TV. Is that really... Is that really Miscavige? Real voice seems too fake. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, maybe he he watched him like uh, uh, like on the, the Scientology TV network or something. Oh, that, that that like that really like South Philly. Is that South Philly, Aaron? You're from Philly. He's Where, got a weird he's got a weird accent. I mean, yeah. even if it was South Philly, he shouldn't still have it. Like it it's weird. Yeah, it's, he, it's, he has a weird way of speaking. Yeah, he's a thug. He speaks like a thug. I can tell you, I don't think his brother Ronnie sounds like that. Not at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. His brother okay. Ronnie is a, a, a nice guy. Redneck Virgin Mary, in my cult, you are shut out if you're not an intellectual in the group. How do you combat that argument? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I think that's a, a logical trap there. I don't think that's a question to us. Yeah, and it also doesn't make sense with her uh, her name Redneck, because uh, the Rednecks maybe, and intellectuals don't travel together. Maybe that's the irony in it. Okay, Dave Owens, if you're an officer, don't say you understand the enlisted folks' experience. That's what Aaron is saying. It's a different experience. Yeah, that's, I mean that's, that's part of what I'm saying. Um, Jam Jam, Mitch, how about? Oh, but wait a minute, I was an officer. So is that what they mean? Because I shouldn't be able to experience. He's just, well, he's saying was, it's not that, hold on. It's okay. not that there's more, better, more truer experiences. It's different experiences. Yeah, Being no, an office. It. Okay. I get um, it. Jam Jam. Mitch, how about, quote, my experience is as unique as everyone else. Okay. I'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put that, uh, I'm going to start a merch store when I launch my book. That's going on a mug. What's the, does your book have a name that you want to announce? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's um, <laughs> uh, no, it's actually coming along great. It's almost done. It's called uh, Scientology, the big lie, how I made an evil cult look good. Okay. Jojo, Mitch, please accept that you had a privileged experience. Uh, oh, I have accepted it. Okay. <laughs> Alyssa said. Is there more you wanted to say on that, Mitch? No, I'm reading this next one. I, I, this is. Go ahead, read this, Aaron. Oh, why can't you just respect everyone's experiences without elevating your own? You were treated differently due to you that he could only get from you. The people below David Miscavige know him the best, a terrifying tyrant. Yeah, I don't think that's the issue. At least. It wasn't that I didn't respect everybody else's. It's just, I didn't want mine excluded from everybody else's because I wasn't in the Sea Org, but we're not going to relitigate that. Is it fair to say that you feel everyone's experiences are equal? It's just that some are more equal than others. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, Aaron. What did you think we were talking about all this time? <laughs> that's, that's one of L. Ron Hubbard's favorite quotes, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. That's, why, that's why I stepped right into it. All right. Um, Barb says people really don't like watching smart people argue passionately, but I do. Well, but hey, you know what? Uh, it would require both of us to be smart. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say, well, there was no problem here tonight. <laughs> we, were, we were both stupid enough to do this. And actually, <laughs> I still think this was a great idea. I know. I know. Um, I, 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 yeah. There's a, one other part of it that we could do another thing on. Because we didn't really talk about this, the, the Scientology food chain. Not well, tomorrow or yeah, the because, next day. You know, you know what I'm talking about. There's this. I do, chain. and that's a yeah. that's an interesting conversation as well. Yeah. Okay, Mark Headley, the cracker liquor himself is in the house. So Aaron is George Washington and Mitch is Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. 
<laughs> he always brings he always brings something special to the party. Ah, okay. Uh, Joni, can you answer what is a CPU asking for Rev Girl? Oh, this means <laughs> central processing unit, right? Or is that uh, um, uh, CPU? I just mean the actual computer. My my yeah. MacBook Pro is yeah. what I'm using it's, as he, my. He's computer. using it as a synonym for computer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, <laughs> Barb says you held your own, Mitch. No one else has. <laughs> She's probably well, I'm, talking hoping, about, I'm hoping I'll get an invite back just because she, of that. <laughs> she's probably talking about Jason. People are so hard on Jason when he and I talk to each other. Um, uh, my Australian friend, Jason Horvatic. Yeah, I saw the last one you guys Oh, were, people are so him. hard on him, but I love yeah. him to death, and I'm going to do tons more talks with him. I, I can't say he's not asking for it, Aaron. I know, but he knows he's asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mile High Hokey. Aaron, if you have Zach on, ask him how courts sometimes allow rich and famous to hide divorce proceedings under false names. Possibly how mm. uh, David Miscavige managed to divorce Shelly. Thank you all for what you do. Um, uh, I'm also willing to, um, and you know what? Forget it, forget it. Because the truth is, I have all sorts of ideas on what could or could not have happened. I guess what gets me um, a little riled up is when people insist that something could not have been one of the possibilities without being able to. I'm not. And I'm not even talking about you. I'm not even just talking about no, you. No, but but you're right because I I was really strident in like, no, you don't get it. There's no way he could have ever divorced her. Right. Which I believe. But then if you say to me, I get but it. is it possible? I get. Yes, it. I get it. it's I get possible. It. So I apologize for not asking that important follow-up question. No, I'm saying that as a way of apologizing to you. No, you see I how this ends? It's I great. Apologize, Mitch. <laughs> you take your apology and shove it up your ass. You take my apology. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I'll shove it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. We need an apology video from AA now. <laughs> get I don't. that. Get that uka. I don't know what that means. Um all right, let's Get see. That uke oh, the ukulele, remember? They're making oh. a reference to the... Colleen Ballinger. Yeah, it's uke. Yeah. It's Ballinger, uke. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get that uke, I get it. Um, okay, Destiny Salazar. Aaron needs to stand in front of a barn and apologize to anyone who was offended by his words about <laughs> Mitch. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to that... take a book collection and get you a ukulele? Oh, Oh, in front of a barn. Oh, is that that might be um yeah, right. That, the barn wood, an, the barn they an have Ashton. That, that's an yeah, Ashton in, Mila in their, joke. Yeah, in okay. their in their twenty five million dollar mansion, they have one Ugh. section of barn wood, like wormwood that was probably imported from a farm yeah. in the mid yeah. in the Midwest, and probably it cost yeah. tens of thousands of dollars. And you know, you, do you know the painting American Gothic, the man and yes. the woman? He's got okay. Yeah. To me, that's what they look like. Right. Yeah. They look like that painting. So. That's funny. That's very funny. Okay. All right. Confusion TV. I was talking about his real voice from what I saw on Leah's documentary. Seems acted and like it isn't his real voice when compared to his interview on ABC. Well, Mitch, this is a question I should ask you. Okay. Do you Does he practice his speeches so much that by the time he gives them, he's not using his natural everyday day voice. He's using a performance voice. No. He's, he's using a performance cadence. Okay. And obviously he's very, very, uh, as Rachel has talked about how the, the photography being perfect, you know, the sound needs to be perfect as well. Mm. But I think they're referencing to ABC Ted Koppel and that was 30 years ago, 28 years ago or something. That would have and, been his natural, because uh, yeah. like, that was an unscripted, that was live. Right. He had no prep, you know. Uh, right. He, he was thrown off. They, they had a physical altercation in the green right. room before the thing went on. Right. Like... So, yeah. So no, I, I, I he rehearses the speeches endlessly. He rehearses them into a camera, and then they edit them together so he can watch them. Right, and just as a little he's, interesting, he's almost as bad as me. <laughs> oh, do you do that? Um, I love <laughs> watching my videos back. Oh, I do too. No, that's smart. Yeah, it's smart. That's how you get better. I'm no, yeah. that's oh, Aaron. Okay. I'm telling you that in my experience, that's some. That's a mark of a professional. Oh, that you would you. actually watch it back and like, because you you you, give, you you learn stuff from it. Just by, just so you're wondering, the way that Dan Sherman became the LRH biographer, became a speaker at events, is that he uh, Miscavige would ask Danny to read if whatever he wrote for him. He'd say, "You read it, Danny. I want to hear how you read it," so he could get the right emphasis and all that. 
Hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? He said, you yeah. read it for me. And then at one of these little rehearsals, he said to Danny, you know what? You do it. <laughs> That's how wow. it happened. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. We're going to make you the official biographer. We'll put you up. You know, why don't you do it? It's a Incredible. Totally how it All right. Gigi says, just wanted to stop by and uh, wish grape nuts. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, all keeping regular. Yeah. Austin Diodorio, Diodorado. I'm curious. And this question is for educational purpose only. Why make this video for everyone to see? What's the angle here? I, I mean, I think we addressed that, um, Austin. Um, you know, uh, look, uh, people, YouTube, the entertainment world does seem to, at you know, this moment in time, appreciate long form, real world content, not scripted shit, not sketches, but real people having right. real conversations. Th those are the podcasts I listen to. Right. And Mitch and I were talking behind the scenes and I was like, why don't we just hash this out it's it, it almost holds us both accountable for what we're saying right if we're having the right. conversation in public right i think that's actually what motivated me to do it because yeah, no I, I think it was really smart because you know as much as i was trying to hold you accountable i realized that there were some things i was really being too strident about like this insistence for example that they couldn't be deforest that was that was uh, I, I i'm glad we did that cool all right mark says aaron mitch said you weren't fit to sleep with pigs but i said you were <laughs> Uh, I love nice, it. Nice. Redneck Virgin Mary. I'm hoping the Aftermath Foundation could include all people imprisoned in cults. Um, if that were even possible to do, I'm sure one day we would do it, but I don't think it is possible. There, it, it, there's too many cults. There's too many people. It would require too much money. And um, the, the reason the Aftermath Foundation works is because we know exactly what we're dealing with. We right. know exactly what the experience is of the people that we help. Right. And it puts us in a unique position right. to be able to help former Scientologists. We couldn't right. do the same thing with former Jehovah's Witnesses or Nexium people or, right. you know, whatever. Um, okay, Gary Gunnels. I've often thought of trolling a local org. How dangerous is that? Is it worth it? Does anyone do it? No, not worth it. Troll them on YouTube instead. Um, Quentin Hubbard. I love planes. All right, cool. Um, Cindy Hout. Hey, Aaron, did you see my email about Tommy and Johnny Scoville? I did, Cindy. Thank you very much. And um, I'll get in touch with Tommy forthwith. Uh, guys, this was a blast. Thank you for tuning in for SPTV, where every day is a bad day to be David Miscavige. Um, even, even today, I would say. Even this evening, even, Mitch. Right. right. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading. Uh, uh, yeah, never mind. What do you say? What do you have? No, I was say this was, uh, there's always one in the crowd. You're always qualifying your relationship being appointed captain of the sewer isn't the same as signing a billionaire contract. I have a hard time listening to you just saying, I mean, duh, it was a joke. Okay. So it really happened, but I told it as a joke. So. True. When I heard this hashing out, I wondered how much of past sec checks and auditing played into it. I don't know. I don't, um, uh, I don't feel like I carry a bunch of sec check trauma. Do you? Um, yeah, I think still a little bit. Well, mostly from the truth rundown that I got from Marty Rathbun. Mm. But I think still a little bit. I don't think, uh, I think it takes a little while. Uh, yeah. I think the main part of it is it's the fear of being made to blame for things that you didn't do. Mm. I think that's the main, the main. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm used to that. <laughs> well, you because you have kids and a wife, so. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for joining the Mitch and Aaron show this evening. It's been a hell of a Sunday. Yeah, um, great way to end take it. it easy tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, Bob. If you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos. Then you could click right in right here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here.